Hey guys, John here, and welcome back to the GeForce OBX tutorial course. In today's video, we're gonna learn all about the preset browser. So to open up the preset browser, we simply have to click these three vertical lines here on the top bar that kind of looks like a bookshelf, and there we go. So these four huge knobs here at the top are gonna to be our four macros that are available to us. These knobs are parameters set up by the patch designer to change how the patch sounds. We're gonna go more in depth on these a little bit later in the course. And to the right of the macro knobs, we have our patch name, so what our patch is going to be called, the patch author, the sound designer for this patch, some patch notes, which is very useful and kind of describes how the patch should be played. And then we have some patch tags, which helps narrow down the search a little bit better. And from the left to the right, we have five separate columns here. The first one is going to be called collection. So here we can see all of our patches, the OBX patches and our user stuff. And this is actually a button right here, this folder. So if we go ahead and click this here, we can see that our save location is down here at the bottom. We can change this by clicking this icon if we want to. We can add new directories if we have different patches saved elsewhere. And then over here on the right, we can import and export collection. So basically preset banks, and then we can delete them if we no longer want them. So next up, we have the column called category. Now this is gonna be the type of sound. So as you can see here, we have arpeggios, we have basses, we have effects, hits, keys, leads, so on and so forth. Now this is really useful. So let's say you're making a track and you just want a pad or you just want leads or something like that. You can click on leads and it's gonna filter out everything that's not a lead. And then over here, you can start looking for what you want. And the next two columns, we have types and timbres. Now these are additional tags and things that we can use to describe our sound a little bit better. So that way, if you're looking for something, you can say, I want a lead that's maybe legato and maybe it sounds a little bit bright. And then we're gonna have these patches here on the right-hand side to choose from that fit that type of category. We can also go for or right here, so we can click this here, so we can go types and timbres, types or timbres, and so on and so forth. So on the right hand side, we have our column of presets. And now further to the right, we have these little heart icons. We can click these if we like a certain patch and want to favorite it. So up the top here, we can see this drop down menu. So we go A to Z, Z to A, favorites, alpha patches. So this is how we can sort these. So if you want to sort by favorites, the ones that you heart, then we just have to click on favorites. And then we have these little logos here, these alpha logos. Now these are called the alpha patches. So you're gonna notice that some of the presets have these and some of them do not. The manual says that these are the patches that our patch designers think are the best representation of the Oberheim OBX capabilities. They're also the only patches available in the demo mode. Now we can always search for different patches up here in the search box here, or we can right click these patches, we can delete it, or we can show the patch file. So showing exactly where it is located on our hard drive. On the bottom bar down over here, we have the init patch button. So here's where we would go to load a fresh new preset to start from the beginning. Then we can go previous and next to kind of toggle and browse the presets while we're inside this browser here. Here we can close the menu and then we have an audition with a certain note here. So let's say we want to audition a certain preset, then we can just click the audition button and it's going to play a note for us. And if we don't want it to be C3, we can click and drag and change this to whatever we want it to be. And then we have random. So this random is actually going to give us a random preset. It's not actually going to randomize the parameter of the synthesizer. Okay, so let's go over saving a preset. So first off here, we're on a different preset. So we can go to init patch. So we're starting fresh, the browser is gonna close and we have a default preset. So let's make something real quick. Let's maybe drop this down an octave, maybe drop this down an additional octave, add some unison, give some detune and open up our modulation. We're gonna go over all this later on, but. Maybe add a little bit of effects here. Okay, so we have this patch and we want to save this thing. So all we have to do is up here on the top right, we can click this button here. And then here is where we're gonna want to type the information of our patch. So we can go here, add our patch name. So what do we want to call this? Then we can go to the author, What you know, what's your name? And some notes, maybe there's certain ways to play your patch. Maybe you wanna play it more in a higher octave or any certain notes that pertain to the patch that you're making. Here's where you wanna write those. And then here's where you wanna name all your macros. Also down over here, so we can add new tags or categories or timbres or even a new collection tag. So here's gonna be the spot if something here doesn't fit what you're actually wanting to do, then you can go ahead and add your own. But for example, we can put this in our user folder. We can say this is going to be a lead, for example. Maybe this might be, if we're looking here, something interesting. Let's go for unison, because we did add some unison. And maybe aggressive and maybe a little bit dark. So these are gonna be the patches that describe this here. And then we can go down here to save, and then it's gonna open up our browser, and then we can just save our patch. You're also, also gonna notice that we have this clear boxes button here. So this is useful in case we, we have a preset that we're starting from, so maybe a different preset that's already made, and then we make a lot of different changes to it, and it kind of becomes this, this new preset, and we gotta save it, and we don't really want all these tags in these boxes, and it's kind of a pain to go ahead and delete everything. Let's say we change our macros. So here we can just go clear boxes, it's gonna wipe everything out, and then we can start re 
putting our information in how our patch actually sounds and what our patch is actually going to be. Another cool thing to know about is the quick save feature. So let's say we have a patch that we saved and we do some changes to it and maybe we want to just overwrite that patch. Quick save is going to be really nice for this. So if you're on a Mac, you would hold down command and then click the save button. On a Windows machine, you'd hold down control and click the save button as well. So the next button we should know about here on the top bar is going to be this maximize and minimize view that has these two arrows pointing towards each other. Now your synth might look a little bit different, more compact. If that's the case, it's probably going to be this button here. So if we click this, it's going to be a little bit smaller. It's going to hide those extra features. But if we want to show them, we can click this again and it's going to maximize our view. The next button is going to be the settings menu, this gear icon over here on the top right. So in case you're looking for a certain setting or something to change within the synthesizer, you're probably going to find it in this menu. Now we're going to go a little bit more in depth in this course on this menu here when it's a little bit more relevant to the things that we're talking about. But I do want you to know that the settings menu is up here located on the top right. On the bottom left hand side of the synthesizer, we see the tuning. Now by default, this is going to be an A440. However, we can click and drag this all the way down to 430 hertz, or we can go all the way to the top here at 450. And to the right is going to be our tempo. Now, if you're using this in a DAW, this is only going to just display the tempo that we're at. However, if you're using the synth in a standalone, then here's where you can actually change the tempo. Now on the bottom right, we have this thing called CC. Now this is going to be the MIDI CC menu. And here's where you can assign different controls of the synth to different CC numbers via the MIDI learn. And once this is pressed, you can see here on the left-hand side, we can hit clear in case we want to wipe any previous assignments out and start from scratch. And to the right of this here, we have our undo and redo buttons, which are rather self-explanatory. And finally, on the bottom right corner here, these lines, we can hover our mouse over this and it's going to change our icon. And here we can resize our synthesizer to a size that's a little bit more comfortable for us to work in. All right, guys. Well, that's it for now. In the next video, we're going to dive into the oscillators and a few other things as well. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.